welcome to my channel please do subscribe to my channel so that you can stay updated about my latest video you get notified so i will stay updated and know when i drop a new video and most of my video i want to help you when it comes to manipulation aspects so all you just need to do is subscribe just click on the subscribe button and it's totally free hey hello and welcome once again to my youtube channel this is reflect image it's been a while if this is your first time visiting, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and also turn on the notification icon. If you're already a subscriber, welcome back. So in this video, I'll be showing you how I transform this picture into this very, very beautiful manipulation with just few simple click. So there are more similar steps with my other videos, but I just did something different here. And I'll be walking you through what I did. So with no further ado, let's jump into the action. This picture was taken with Canon 6D with three light setups. And my 15 millimeter Canon prime lens. So, as you can see, I've done my basic adjustments. The picture is taken with RAW, so that's why it brought me straight to camera. So once I'm done my basic adjustment, the next thing I need to do is to open my picture in Photoshop. Click on open and wait for it to load up. So, it's going to load in Photoshop for us this way. So, once it does, the next thing you need to do is to retouch your picture. As you all know, I don't do my retouching in all my video tutorials. Let's skip that part to the next step. But please try to retouch your picture before you start any manipulation procedure. If not, you are going to regret it later on in the day. So try to make sure you retouch your picture before you start manipulation. Once you're done with retouching, flatten your image back to the background layer so you can start from there. So once you're done with that, the next thing you need to do is to expand your picture. So go to the crop tool. Yes, the crop tool here. You can click on C on your keyboard and pick the size you want. As you can see, my size is already at what I want it to be, which is my 4x5 into bracket 8 by 10 pixels in case your own, own is not there you can choose whatever size you use the most i use my 4x5 because i post mostly on my instagram and i don't like whenever i post on my instagram instagram do reduce the size for me probably recrop my picture i don't want that so i do that for my photoshop and i call it a day but as you can see when i use my 4x5 as you can see that actually cut off the leg and the the header is not giving me enough space so drag from the side expand from the side don't worry about all this area expand till you see if it what you want i think i like it around this way once you're done with it just click on your ok so once you're done with that then the next thing for you to do is to duplicate your background layer so let's go back here and resume here because i've retouched my picture over here as you can see and i've done the expansion over here so forget about this background layer this is just a sample layer as you can see this is a sample layer so let's continue from where we stop here. So go back to your background layer, duplicate by clicking on Ctrl J. Once you're done with that, go to your polygonal lasso to your lasso to whatever tool you know how to use best. But the tool I know how to use best is my quick selection tool because it's going to give me an head start. So click on quick selection tool and click on select subject and wait for it to load up and see what it's going to give us. So give it time, as you can see, it's going to do about 90% of the job, some of the time 100%. But sometimes you just need to make some few adjustments, as you can see right now. As you can see this area, I'm going to add it to my selection. It's not selecting yet to my perfect, to my text. So this area also, this area also, I'll use my polygonal as well too in this side, polygonal. So use whatever tool you know how to use best. As you can see, let me surprise this from selection right now. If you want to know I remove my background perfectly, there's a video, a whole video dedicated to that. Just go and watch my videos. It's going to teach you how to do that. This is just the first process I get to the particular place I want to talk about. So as you can see right now. So let's just say I'm done with my selection. Let's say this is the perfect selection I want. The next thing I just need to do, just to right click on my image. I'll go to feather. As you all know, the ranges I use in my picture mostly is my two pixel. And I'll click on my OK. Once I'm done with that, OK, let me add this here into the selection. Once I'm done with that, I just have to max it. So this right now, I've actually sub subtracted my subject from the background. So if I'm to turn off my background layer right now, as you can see, I have my subject layer separately. For this I'm having right now, the background is still part of this net that is over here. So let's remove that right now. So double click on the max you just put it right now. Double click on it. It's going to open a panel for you, which is called the Refined Edge panel. So with this panel right now, you can remove from the area you don't want to be there, like this area right now. I don't want the background to be there. So I'm going to scroll by it like this. Can you see? 
all the info for us. It removes the background. Though it's going to remove part of the fabric, you just have to do it, take your time and do it perfectly. You can see right now. As you can see. You can see right now. It's going to remove the background for us and it's going to leave the net. So it's going to clean part of the net, but to make our picture look more very, very realistic, we need to actually do this procedure. It's kind of necessary, it's mandatory to actually do it. So that our manipulation will look very, very real. It's not that the underlying background will be shown in our picture. So once you're done with this right now, just click your OK to go back to the Photoshop and wait for it to load up. As you can see, we have our net wire. So you can now turn back on your background layer right now. Go to back to the background layer, duplicate it again by clicking on Ctrl J. If you're using MacBook, Command J on your MacBook. So the next thing you need to do is to hold down your Ctrl key and click on the sorry. Let's rename this our layer right now. Let's rename this our modify. Modify. This is just for my do. You don't have to rename rename your layer. So all you just need to do right now is to hold down your control key, click on your subject layer, which is this layer right here, click on the max of it, for you to bring back the selection for us, then go to select, under select, go to modify, then go to expand. As you all know, I do expand my picture by 8 pixels, you can use 10, you can use 6, but make sure it's 6 and above. Once you're done with that, just click on your OK. Once it did load up, you just have to go to your rectangle marker tool. The area that you don't want to be the picture, I want to fill up with the background. Select the area right now. So for you to do that, make sure your selection is an addition. Make sure it's not on single selection. This is a single selection. This is an addition over here. So scroll over from the top like this. Once you're done, then come to this area. Do the same thing here. And I am not selecting this stand. So let me select the stand again with it. So I'll do the same thing to this left hand side also. The reason I was able to make multiple selections is because I'm using addition as my selection. So I'll do the same thing to this stand out part also again. So I just need to do right now. Just to right click on it. I'll go to fill under fill. I'm going to click on content away. Color adaptation is on. My blending mode is on normal. All I just need to do is to click on my OK and wait for it to load up. Let's see if it's going to fill the area up with the initial backdrop or it's going to give us something entirely different. But I know it's going to do 90% of the job for us. And some might not know this how wide our backdrop is once it's done with the selection. So let's give it time, let's give it time, depending on how fast your PC is, sometimes it does not take up to 30 seconds and sometimes it takes up to a minute. So let's see what it's going to give to us right now. And boom, look at what it did for us right now. It filled that entire area up with the initial background by sampling from the initial background. So that's the work of AI, so it's going to do a perfect job for you. Some might not know. Your studio background is not this wide. You might be using the five by seven backdrop, and you extend it this way, and no, nobody can tell. So and that's the beauty about it. So control this is the select right now. So once you're done with that, the next thing you need to do is to actually smoothen the backdrop. But for this particular manipulation we are doing right now, I don't think we need to smoothen this backdrop right now. There's no need for it because we don't need the backdrop itself. So the next option is for you to start manipulating right now, since we've actually modified our subject. So we're going on the one minute break. See you guys in the next one minute. So in case you're interested in getting any of my picture editing file, from my overlays down to my color lookup, which is my lot file. So you just have to scroll down to your video. So under the comment, this is my description. So it's not going to load the description for you. You just have to click on show more, click on it. So it's going to show all the options. Once it does that, just click on my store link. So here's my store link. Once you click on it, it's going to take you directly to my store. So you can actually select any file you want from the color lookup. This is a light skin lot. This is a feather which I use in my recent video. This is 100 premium baby overlays. This is my fourth video course. This video course entails on how to download all the files I want. The site I use in downloading all my files free of charge, including my Photoshop panels also. This includes my PNG files. This includes all my packs. All my picture editing files, my premium overlay, my PNG, my flying fabrics, my color lookup, my presets. So once you buy this, you've already bought everything apart from this one. So here is my flying fabrics. Here is my, in case you want to give me any project for me to work on. Here is my color lookup. Here is my background overlay. And here is my preset file. So in case you're interested in buying any one, you can actually go for them. The good news there is that you can actually buy your own currency, any currency of your choice. You can buy with any currency of your choice. So, welcome back, guys. So, let's jump straight into the manipulation. Unlike before, 
whether I just smooth in my backdrop and I bring in an overlay, turn into soft light, then I export my picture. It's going to be entirely different. So there are some times that you actually blend in the backdrop, but you want the backdrop to show very, very more vibrant, but you're going to give you a dullish vibe, which you don't like. So let's make an amendment to that right now. So I'll just go to my file manager. We'll be using a single backdrop though. We'll be using one single backdrop. We'll be using a single backdrop. So this is the backdrop we'll be using right now. You can see. I'll drag it down to my Photoshop and I'll wait for it to load up. So this is the backdrop I'll be using right now. So the first thing I just need to do is to expand it to the way I want it to be. I think I want it to be around this way. I'll click on my OK. So I'll wait for it to actually place up. So this I'm having right now, if I'm to leave it this way, this is the way I want it to be. But if I'm to leave it this way, the footer shadow won't be showing for me. And without the footer shadow, our manipulation will look very, very real. It seems as if this is being manipulated. And to make manipulation look very nice, we need to make it look hyper realistic. So the first thing I will do right now, I will add a little bit of depth of field on the backdrop. I want it to be a little bit blur at the back, not at the floor. So the first thing first for me to do, let's rasterize this our layer which we brought in right now. So I click on it, click on rasterize layer. Then duplicate it by clicking on Ctrl J. Then go to filter, under filter, I'll go to blur, then I'll go to Gaussian blur. So I'll wait for it to load up. I'll be using about 12 pixels as my radius. I'll click on my OK. But this I'm placing right now, the moment I blood it, it blood the entire document. So for me to actually make it look very, very nice, this area needs to be on blood. So I'll create a max on it. Then I'll pick my normal brush. I'll make sure the color is on black. Then I'm, I'm going to scroll by the area which I don't want the blood to be. As you can see right now. So I'll make the boat back together. The, the boat I duplicated, I'll make the boat back together by clicking on Ctrl E. Once I'm done with that right now, the next thing I just need to do is to Go from blending mode on blending mode from normal, bring it down to soft light and boom. So bring it down to soft lights and boom. So here's what I'm talking about. It looks a little bit faint for my liking. Though the shadow is back, the shadow I want to be there is back, but it's too faint for my liking. It's not looking hyper realistic enough. And that's not what we want. We want it to look very, very real. So what I just need to do right now is to do what? To duplicate it once more again by clicking on Ctrl J. Can you see right now? It's giving me yes, this is very, very vibrant enough. But this I'm having right now. If the saturation of the backdrop which we actually brought in before that our initial backdrop is actually still reflecting on the picture which is a little bit too much for my liking so i'll go to the layer below the boot layer i brought in which is my two overlays i'll go on on top of my modify then i'll go to my ear and just my adjustment layer where i'll click on it and i'm going to click my ear and saturation so now the saturation i'm just going to drag it down you can see i'm going to kill the initial color of the backdrop for me though my shadow is this still there very very realistic so with this right now, my picture is looking very, very nice. But I still have an issue. I have, an, I have a defect in the picture. So zoom in very well, I might not see it. So zoom into the, to the edge area. You can see it's very, very obvious in this area, this particular area that will crop out the picture. So to make it look perfectly fine and okay, click on your subject layer, not the max, the layer itself. Then go to layer, under layer, scroll down to meeting. Under meeting, click on color to contaminate. Wait for it to load up and boom. It's going to remove all those lines at the edge of the picture for you. Then you click on your OK and boom, our manipulation is looking very, very nice and pink. So the next thing for you to do right now is to do what? Go back to your adjustment layer. We are starting like our golden right now. Our manipulation is looking very, very nice. Go to adjustment layer, then click on your color lookup, click on the 3D lot and scroll down. I'll be using my Mela chocolate as my first lot. Click on it and boom. This will give me a low light vibe. As you all know, I love low light picture. But if this is too much for my liking, come down to the opacity, you drag it down till you see fit, you drag it down, click on OK. The next thing you need to do, go back there again. But with this, you can just export a picture, you can call it a day, but I love using two lots for my picture. Click on my color look up, then click on the 3D lot. And I can use my near brown, let me use my near brown. And boom, it's going to add a little bit of vibrance to my picture, which is very, very nice. With this, export a picture, and you're good to go. Look at how nice and look at the way we were able to manipulate our picture and make it look very, very hyper realistic at the same time. So with this, I think you should be able to do that if you want your background to be very, very vibrant and also you still want to retain the shadow. Make sure you just duplicate your soft light twice, which is your value you just brought in. And you need to give it just that. So with this, I think you should be able to create something very, very nice. And I'll be dropping the value for you on my Telegram group. But if you're interested in the Full pack of the overlay, my lot file, my presets, they are all available for sale in my store. I just go and make purchase there. So, see you guys in my next tutorial.